This year is a really important year. Every three years, the International Civil Aviation Organization has its assembly, and that's where the 191 countries who are signatories to the Chicago Convention come together to make important decisions. From an industry point of view, it's really key as part of our overall strategy for addressing climate change. Way back in 2009, we set three targets. We were the first global industry to do so. We said we'd um, improve our fuel efficiency by 1.5% per annum between 2010 and 2020. We then said that we would try and achieve carbon neutral growth, which means that even though our traffic will continue to grow, we want to stabilize the emissions at the 2020 level. And then by 2050, our third target was to reduce those emissions down to half the level that they were in 2005. Now, that's a tall order. And the way that we're going about doing that in the industry is by following what we call a four pillar strategy. We're a technology driven industry, so it's developing and employing new technologies. And we're seeing a whole raft of new types of aircraft coming into the fleet right now. The um, Airbus A350, the Bombardier C-Series, we've seen the, the Dreamliner from Boeing, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we're already seeing the impacts of that. The second pillar is about operation improvements, how we fly the aircraft. We take weight off the aircraft to, use, uh, to reduce fuel use. We fly more intelligently to reduce the distance and the time the aircraft is in the air. And we try and get the aircraft up into cruising altitude and back down again as efficiently as possible because that maximizes the efficiency of the use of the aircraft. The third area, which is more in the purview of governments than it is within the industry, but is having efficient infrastructure. So making sure there's enough capacity on the ground in terms of airport and runway capacity, but also in the air in terms of um, air traffic management capacity to manage the most efficient flight operations possible. And then the final piece of the puzzle, and this is the bit about the global market-based measure, is understanding that we're not going to be able to deliver carbon neutral growth on our own. We're going to have to have some mechanism for offsetting um, some of our emissions growth by buying credits outside of our industry um, so that we can stabilize the emissions at the 2020 level. That's what's on the table in ICAO this year, and that's uh, why it's important this year for the airlines that we get a result from that meeting. There's been a lot of work done um, in ICAO, in the industry, over the last few years, evaluating many different approaches for trying to create this market-based mechanism as it's known. And everybody seems now to agree that the most efficient way for the industry to do it is to have what's called a carbon offsetting scheme. So essentially, we will um, hold our emissions at the 2020 level, and any growth in emissions above that, we will go outside and we'll buy credits uh, emissions credits on the open market um, in order to compensate, if you like, for those emissions that we're creating that we can't reduce on our own. And that's basically the um, elements of a carbon offsetting scheme. Well, the, the key things to um, uh, having a, a robust carbon offsetting scheme is the integrity and the quality of the credits that are actually purchased. So you can't just go off and buy anything. Um, it's about having something that's very verifiable, that it, you know, essentially if you're buying a ton of carbon from one of those credits, you want to make absolutely sure that that ton of carbon has been removed from the atmosphere. So, for example, the most well-known mechanisms are, are what's called the, the Clean Development Mechanism, which is a United Nations um, uh, monitored and managed um, approach. So, for example, you could have a project in uh, a developing country uh, which avoids uh, a certain number of tons of CO2 by taking uh, a more uh, sustainable ecological approach. For example, um, avoiding building um, a massive hydroelectric dam uh, and instead uh, putting a turbine in the river uh, that avoids all the concrete and the construction and everything else. You can actually calculate the number of, of tons of carbon uh, saved by that and then they can be sold off and then taken off what's called a registry to make sure they're physically removed from the environment. That's the principle that's at the heart of this.
it's a four pillar strategy. So while we're currently focused on trying to get this market based measure, that doesn't mean that all the work on the other areas has stopped far from it. And I think most of the exciting developments are actually in the technology area. I mentioned the fleet changes uh, with all the new aircraft coming onto the fleet. One of the great steps forward at the beginning of this year was actually, again, at ICAO, adopting uh, a, a new CO2 standard for aircraft. So as we go forward, any new aircraft coming into the fleet will have to meet certain quite stringent criteria for CO2 emissions. It's a bit like if you go out and buy a refrigerator and they've got that lovely sort of color coded thing that you know exactly what the energy rating is of your um, refrigerator, this will be a stipulation that aircraft have to actually meet a certain standard. And that again will accelerate the benefits that are coming through. And on top of that, the other area that is really showing promise is sustainable alternative fuels. You know, five years ago, seven years ago, this was just a dream. Since then, we've, we've validated them, we've developed them, we've safety tested them. And the great thing is we found out that we can use those fuels intermixed with existing jet fuel. So as they become available, we'll just increase the amount that's in the mix for the industry. And the big challenge now has been, how do we produce enough of this stuff at the right price? And gradually, the unit cost of the, these fuels has come down. And we're getting some sizable commitments, both by airlines, but also um, at airports who are supplying the airlines flying in and out of those airports with a certain percentage of sustainable alternative fuels. That is going to be the, the, the groundwork now for a, a massive expansion in this as we go through 2020, 2030, 2040. So the, 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 the profile of the industry in terms of how it's addressing the climate challenge is going to shift dramatically over the next 20 to 30 years.